Bye! <laughs> This is Daniel's marks from this yeah. morning. Can I have a look? When Ricardo did yeah. this. Oh yeah. And nearly ended up going down the F2. Um, F2 is, yeah, the pit lane, yeah. Uh, it's, pit lane. it's really great, uh, Laura. It's, yeah. it's so much fun, but it's also, you know, uh, adrenaline and intense, of course, because, you know, one, you're trying to uh, look at your breaking point, you're, you're yeah, battling with, uh, you know, uh, another competitor, and the source hairpin is such an important corner because it's a slow hairpin, but then it sets you up for what we're on now, which is the long run down to the famous O'Rouge and Radion, and then even and further on to the Premier State. From there, you're on Tomorrow. Tomorrow. For the best part of 30 or 40 seconds. So if you make a mistake, you'll carry any mistaken deficit from that all the way up to the, the Le Comte Chicane, which is 30 or 40 seconds away. On the right, guys, we've got the F2 cars and the old style uh, the pit carriages. They've just been out for their qualifying session just before. Hands before we have the Porsche Super Cup on the track. Uh, and yeah, if you look forward now, guys, hold on tight because we're going to start climbing into the famous O'Rouge and Ready On. Talk us through it, Laura. This is the best part of this pathway. We all love it. Seven kilometers and this is the one you want to be on. Oh, they're going to be fast, this is compressive. These are the shots you want to take on and see how fast you can object from this one. Be precise, not run up area. We're trying it on this part to the outside and have the best turning in point. You can see the rubber on the ideal line. This is where you normally turn in. And see how, how you feel as a driver. I mean, the is crazy because you come up here yep. for the balance trade, you have to have a good toll because it's the first option where you can overtake and you have to actually nail the corner. You do, you're absolutely right, and uh, some drivers tend to nail it a bit more than others, but in the wrong sense, they tend to fly over, obviously, the, the section that's not labelled as theirs, with, you know, the, the noted by the white lines out of side. I've always, I've always said to myself, you know, the best thing that uh, the race director can do for the drivers in the briefing, I give them a colouring book each, and then they can have a go colouring in the book, and then check their work. If they stayed in between the lines, then they can go out and track and do the same again. <laughs> I feel like that's just a very good example. But uh, yes, in a few corners, one as you may have just spotted, in fact, the, uh, the race director has recently started, you know, uh, making some modifications to a few tracks since the Austrian Grand Prix, uh, and by uh, moving the actual white line uh, about 50 meters further outward, yeah. and then also painting a colored blue or green line in this weekend's case. Uh, so that gives the judges the fact a better uh, viewpoint and helps them uh, decide whether uh, you know the cars have actually fully gone all four wheels off the track and exceeded track limits or not. Uh, and it also means it's more difficult for the drivers to uh, uh, exceed track limits but potentially stay on track as well because the cars are two meters wide and which is you know about as wide as the trucks ladies and gents here which gives you a good perfect reference point but now we're out climbing up the uh the camel straight ladies and gents we're past the first drs so the drs is wide open those caps best be facing backwards ladies and gents because we need that full effect because we're only in p2 we need to make up some ground on the p1 truck in front of us but we're still climbing there aren't we we're still climbing why are we not at the top yet we reach it shortly and actually you normally just don't see that on tv of course you see it in our room but still here this is the highest point we're approaching uh, and it's also one of the trickiest section because you're flat out trying to defend normally on the inside line where our normal um, mercedes are just passing us by because that's the defending line you want to make sure that you break the toe from the drive as you have the drs yeah. and then you have to the <laughs> into the pump the section is right and left Pretty quick. Alex, so you want to make sure Akin and Schumacher. Look up the Akin and was a Schumacher. Exactly. Where we come to our uh, highest point of, of the circuit, 100 meters difference between in general, and it's actually quite nice to just, yeah. It's quite the, the traffic jam, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. It's the whole circuit is fantastic, ladies and gentlemen. It's the Camel Straight. Akin and was a Schumacher. It was a lot longer than this, going through the flowing through the Ardennes forest. Twice seven kilometers long this track an absolute masterpiece yeah shortened a little bit from then now down to you know a very more sedate seven kilometers but that still makes it the longest track on the current f1 calendar ladies and gentlemen still very long but that means, doesn't mean that the cars don't uh, get around it any less quicker of course 
But yeah, as a hopefully a quicker average trading line though, we're just going to take it to a small, slow vehicle traffic. We're not going for a dive bomb into, into the, the comms chicane, but uh, yeah. DRS from the start, obviously through our rouge and ready on. We've seen cars two wide, three wide, sometimes drop four wide at the start of the race. So yeah. And also very important to the rest of the As we come in here, you know, it's a couple of the medium braking zones. They don't really slam on too much. Uh, because you can carry the speed in well, it, even though it looks like it tightens a lot. It's quite a smooth and unforgiving uh, um, track layout and surface, so you'll see the drivers, you know, potentially overtaking up the inside and also over around the outside as well, so there's a lot of scope for the drivers, but that also makes it difficult, Laura, as a driver, of course, that means you don't know where you're looking and you've got to get your elbows out even more. Yeah, exactly, and you just want to make oh, sure that you're up in the gravel because you've the you Porsche guys to be there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you see this one trap all over the ground. <laughs> Losing out on downforce. With a, with a blue, flashing blue light, actually. Yeah. I think he's actually trying to get by. Hitting the apex of camber. Yes, absolutely. Uh, or, you know, for coming in here, I mean, well, that's a good reference point for us, ladies and gentlemen. If you look over there, you can see just look, how far we've come, we've come from the pit front. Yeah. And also, how Amazing, high we're still, even though we've only just begun our descent. Um, but yeah, you can see as well, you're looking back through, look how long this corner is. It's, it is a hairpin, the Rivard corner, but it's so long. And because of that, it means you've got the drivers can make use of them multiple lines. There's no quite one particular way to yep. get around that corner. And like I said, through the common and Melody. Uh, complex uh, before it gives the drivers a lot more scope to you know run outside oh, yeah. of them, uh, which you know tends to be, of course, you know helps give us and produce us better racing. You know, also the people see the marshals being like, picked up right now in the buses. They're having done a great job, and if you see still some to say to them because without these guys we can't race. Coming down here, especially also the gravel pad gets quite deeper, and it's important to take all the benefits up to this one. Uh, Sorry. We are getting all the Sorry. Speeding today, so they're actually having the they are as well, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We need to try and throw the anchors out and slow them down. That's <laughs> more <laughs> like it. Oh, uh, it's yeah. Yeah. Little problem. He's not even at the bus stop yet. The official one, anyway. So, yeah, we're now coming down. Oh. Oh, that could have been a, a joke. One of wow. those uh, Gridstall uh, scary crash movies there. It is, absolutely, you're right. Uh, we seem to be obviously a bit more to the end of the chat, but I think that's because the truck we're trying to chase down, we're trying to get a bit of a sense. Yeah. Right. We're into the next sequence of corners now, ladies and gentlemen. The pool on corner, we're into uh, halfway through the second chapter now, and this is a fantastic corner. It's one of my favourite oh, first corners, so, because you're coming in hot here at uh, 290 kilometres an hour, 300 kilometres an hour. The F1 drivers take a slight lift or a quick dab of the brakes, and then they literally just chop it in at its top of it. And even though they do chop it in, they've still got to manage it going forward. Because as you can see again, this little green line next yep. to the red-white curve yeah. and the uh, white line. Another two point for track limits. And you'll see again, it's another long developing oh. corner. So they'll turn in there initially, but they won't know really whether they've managed to end up where they want to. Ideally, of course, on the track, not off it, otherwise they might get a penalty. Uh, until they actually come you know, more yep. towards the tail end of that sequence of corners. Yeah, and it's full speed down the hill as well. And also, what we have seen, and the track has some new surface, but yep. this year, there is more asphalt being laid out, so that means we have a good change uh, on the track, yeah. and also it makes it more faster. And yep. we have put in the wet, uh, two weeks driving in June, they are three seconds faster now, so I got the new surface. And this is good, I mean, we're running on to the last year, we had kind of a rain, a big rain session today, but uh, luckily not that it's more rain this year. So we have the day that we lost. Yeah. Yeah, we're coming into the Fanny Chicane, also known as uh, the Piff Path 
chicane uh, and uh, yeah by the looks of it you know we're we're getting our elbows out we're giving them a bit of a tip and a pack and we've managed to sneak up the inside but Le as you can like say, <laughs> you know, yeah. the truck is about the same width as a Formula 1 car and you've not yeah. got reference to the other truck it's only just about wide for two cars here oh, yeah. to the likes of the camel straight we were on up before like I say you could get up to four wide up there so yeah the, the snake sort of like wider and narrows and different points this is one of the obviously the more older sections so it's really tricky and it's really important for you know on the early days like uh, Thursday or even Wednesday potentially when the teams start arriving that you know teams do a bit of a, a track walk session or you know a track bike session or a track scooter session whatever your mode of transport is others are also available um, but yeah it's really important for those guys to come around and just sort of you know see for themselves personally with the eye uh, up close and personal what any changes have happened like you mentioned Lauren the, the tarmac change and some new additions to tarmac like this strip just back here as we're coming into uh, to the end of section yeah. two now ladies and gents because uh, you know that's fair it's beautiful isn't it yeah. it's oh, yeah. nice it's difficult what are you what, what's that yeah it is but yeah. I can also like we can see pretty this pretty seems really to be hotel nice. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Again, if you do that, you just end up in the rubble, so you have to make it's sure that you have a little industrial area, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, nice and easy to have. Oh, yeah. Well, they've all got gas sets for as well. Coming into Porsche, because again, this is one of the longest straight you can have on this track. So all full standard, full speed, and into the bus stops you can be talked about, yep. uh, where it's a heavy braking zone coming up. Apart from the tyre is trans. It's a bit, you have to get speed to high speed corners. Of course, a long today, track. Seven kilometers. Seven no, absolutely not. You're right, Laura. The tire stress around here, I mean, it is a low downpour circuit. We do tend to see, you know, the, the drivers and teams picking a more low profile, low drag setup on the cars, which is strange if you think about it because, like, some of the corners obviously are very high speed, fast and flowing. But they, although they might be high speed, they don't actually put a whole lot of stress into the car and into the tyres as much. So, you know, we tend to that's the see in the car no, to be a one or a two oh, yeah. uh, throughout the race. Yeah, and as you mentioned as well, you, have, gonna be you know, they used to do karting in a lot of the races. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't do it anymore. It's yeah. just not ideal for the teams. I think too that many people around now. Yeah, when they go into the qualifying, the cars are effectively into par firmly as soon as they leave the garage. Oh, that is the karting circuit. That means they can't really make any set of changes which is a disaster for those go guys because no, they go have to find some kind of hybrid compromise because they're going out for a wet qualifying but then the day after they know currently it's going to be a nice sunny day yes, and dry right. and so they're two completely opposite setups so they're going to have to you know perhaps we might see the teams looking more towards the race obviously and not have an optimum wet setup uh, but it doesn't mean that they're still not going to try that hard obviously. I mean the qualifying position is normally people so you've seen the overtakes are quite <laughs> There's many there's places. Plenty of yeah. on the circuit, so there should be good yeah. if they have the right strategy. And uh, we can just make a guess right now. We do have Ferrari fans over here. Yes. So yeah, you just bring. I mean, they were pretty good today. Yeah, yeah. Ferrari, Ferrari victims. Of course, but, <laughs> I mean, let's see how it is in Bali anyway. But they are strong and they have some opportunities for the table. But what do you think? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Let's be real here. Lando. Lando or Oscar? I love it. I love it. It's great. Ah, yeah. oh, no, I have to be in a yeah. I couldn't possibly name anyone. I'm, I'm going to go for uh, uh, Marshall Bottas. <laughs> My personal favourite, yeah, nah, nah, nah. Um, yeah, actually, it's, it's, it's good because, you know, obviously the current regulation of cars, yes, it's taken a year or two, but they are starting to come good, thankfully, you know, the other teams, you know, like Mercedes, Ferrari, McLaren, they're finally, uh, you know, coming to match up Red Bull with their development. Red Bull potentially have sort of maybe hit a bit of a peak, perhaps, you know, regardless of whether, you know, the likes of Nui leaving is anything to do with that or if they've just Almost finished. So getting the max out of their car they can Almost but also so. yeah, the yeah. They has to be specifically Apparently chosen to he was give dead Max a new engine at this round obviously that means he gets a 10 place grid penalty for the race on Sunday that's, that's, that's basically what they, they know how say, good and you know, not you know, too yeah, difficult yeah, it is to overtake round here they obviously it's the uh, two DRS zones and the uh, Two years ago, in uh, 2022, he did the exact same thing. Yeah. They took an engine penalty yeah. at this round. He started 14th and still won the race. So, yeah, it gives us 
good hope definitely for some right. plenty good overtaking obviously the last few uh, Grand Prix are definitely you know something to help fuel the fire for oh definitely but you're not yeah. betting on Lance then sorry say again but button. your bet is not on Lance I couldn't possibly call it. Yeah, it could be Lance, it could be Fernando, no, no, it could no, be no, Bottas, no, it could be Zoe. No, we couldn't it, touch it. It's a 1 in 20 chance, how about that, that anyone could win. Okay. No, I'd, I'd, put, I'd actually put it lower than that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's be fair, let's be fair. But yeah, we're coming up to sort of the tail end of uh, our lap now, guys. We've just come through the, the probably the fastest corner, the Blanchemont circuit. Flat out. And some of the, the hardcore so fans are still the themselves. So they're, they're so probably fast, come for a hyper in, there just happens to be a, an F1 Grand Prix weekend, you know, racing around here. But yeah, the blocks from on the corner, Laura, it's pretty easy flat nowadays. For from Lachimont, it's the crazy. Do the bus now. stop. But then they've got quite a difficult... Second gear corner. corner coming up Sometimes straight, first, which is the bus but today. most of the time it's a second gear corner. Exactly, and it's actually normally the breaking point is between 150 yeah. meter marks, so normally they try to trust the public like hand parts. Knocking up the tyres is quite easily right. done over here. And then you have to also pick into your right hand side. You want to make sure that you just defend as well if you have someone literally on your tail. But you also have to compromise a little bit. That's because the first corner is not so important when you turn in. It's the second one that's coming out of the chicane. So normally you sacrifice the potentially and then you just be like speedy on the exit. So normally this is 150 meter mark. And That's if you what, just look at this look at the, type um, of way of the where they actually break. Yeah. Down yeah. 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 into here. <laughs> yeah. You realise just how tight this is. Two yeah. meters more and then you just actually cannot do it. Because yeah. um, we have I mean, to also it's completely like a higher curve coming up on the inside so line. You see how narrow it is? And you see on the right hand just to pick into. So we have six of spin off today. So this is quite used to all the time. <laughs> some, some accidental drifting has perhaps gone on there. But There's yeah, the pit lane entry there. From the, the you can see a pit entry written there. Like you've seen some tyre marks there. That's definitely not from the single seater cars because, you know, in terms of her, when they're running over to her, they can be a little bit more fragile. Julia! So Julia! Cars because uh, they're a lot more stronger, they're a GT car, the suspension is a lot more robust. And they love to fly with those pillars. They can make the most of it because their car can take it. And that's the best way to get them to rotate their car, definitely. But as we were going through there as well, if you noticed, although it's a chicane, it's almost like two hairpins. They're really quite tight on one another. But again, another one of the few slow speed corners around this high speed track. Because it's so important because when we're in the slow speed corners, that's the longest point we're in those corners for. We spend more time in the slow speed corners than the high speed corners. So it's really important because that's where you can make up the whole time. Yeah, what I'm also going to ask is that you're on the talking way right now, although we actually feel like a driver is about to start. Oh, yeah, there you go. Getting ready with flags. Yeah. Rehearsals. I know when you put my eyes down, everybody knows this is my new time. I was in the view. Do you have to do it? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> they do, don't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, they absolutely do. And well, my challenge is to be a little bit similar too. I, I just like to make sure I was always ready and waiting in time to go. Sometimes then you, you are sitting around for like maybe, I say ready and wait for it, it's only like 10 or 15 minutes beforehand, but you never know. Obviously, our side of things were endurance races, so you know, we have to be ready for a pitch stop at a certain point, but then you could get a safety car, and that means, okay, we're going to pitch now, so you have to be ready. Really good perspective. But looking back now, ladies and gents, down the start finish straight, even from the source air, but you can see there's even a little bit of elevation fire coming up from the, the, uh, the start finish line yeah. and, and twice a lot of camera turning into the apex of the corner, which you don't normally typically pick up uh, from the TV cameras. Um, like I said, again, it's again one of the most important corners because you need to square the car up here and point it and square it and fire it all the way down here to the famous road we've been ready on. And they've recently, over the last year or so, added back to the gravel track yeah. because the FIA uh, uh, Julia is the yeah. driver yeah. running around uh, on the, uh, the open Julia. lap, especially uh, during races. And, uh, you know, maybe getting a cheeky sort of a free advantage out of that. But um, as racing drivers, you'll always try and take any cheeky little advantage you can get as long as you can... That's pretty good. Oh, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, good. But, um, you know, same for them. You would have thought of being in the truck, it's more fair racing as well. No, I would have thought. But, uh, what, what you don't want to be is the fourth <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, they, they do a pretty good job nowadays to wow. make sure... It's one of the best you truck know, tours I've been on. Who, who yeah, yeah, yeah. Even better than last year. Honestly speaking. As possibly 